Madam Minister, distinguished guests, dear general officers, dear friends, Airbus is very proud today as a prime contractor of the programs and in collaboration with all our industrial partners to um, have enabled launch and to have contributed to the launch of CSO one We'd like to thank you for the, the trust um, um, over the past year. Years and uh, uh, we've been uh, delighted work for the accounts of the uh, Ministry of the Armed Forces from Sport One to LS One to Playyard and to the CSO. And uh, this really is about uh, the uh, ground segments as well as the uh, optical space component. Uh, all the operations have gone seamlessly, smoothly, and we've uh, exceeded our targets, notably in terms of the life span of the satellite, I would like to pay tribute to the spirit of cooperation that for all of the years we've been working together have characterized the cooperation between uh, the General Directorate of Armaments and as well as Talis and Yespace. In the industry, these programs have enabled the, indus the national industry to develop uh, extremely strong competencies, um, um, development of uh, a wide range of products and unique uh, skill sets and uh, offering on the export market. I'm looking forward uh, to the continuity of such a, an endeavor. So whilst uh, enabling um, our clients, uh, um, whilst uh, developing a voluntary policy allowing Airbus to be the leading exporter of innovative systems around the earth. So this is the final launch of the year. So. Uh, this is a, a, this was a daytime launch for Airbus. This is the 19th satellite launch in 2018 with a total of 123 satellites launched on board uh, Ariane Space Satellite Launchers. This is the uh, result of long-standing cooperation. And we are preparing 2019 with the launch of OneWeb and a few other such launches um, going forward. So finally, I'd like to, to Pay tribute to all of the industrial partners, notably Talis and Innerspace and all our OEMs and contractors who have contributed over the years and today once again to the integration, the testing and on the operations leading to this uh, fantastic satellite, uh, namely CSO. And uh, we're looking forward to the implementation and uh, operational support of CSO. And uh, the optical space components, I'd like to thank all the teams in Toulouse, Cannes, and in all of the industrial sites in France, Europe, and beyond for their engagement, their passion um, in this program. Uh, so uh, a special thought for the uh, our operations teams. He will take over controls on separation of the launchers and for positioning and orbiting operations, uh, as well as uh, uh, in orbit uh, acceptance test and testing will be starting um, in, uh, in the very near future. So we would like to thank all the teams in developing and supporting space systems for the benefit of the French and European armed forces. Thank you. Madam Minister, Mesdames et Messieurs les Officiers Généraux, Distinguished uh, General Officers, CNES the President of CNES, the President of Arian Spatz, Ladies and Gentlemen, amis, dear uh, colleagues and dear friends, what a fantastic launch for this so. fantastic satellite. And so congratulations for this wonderful Knesset result to all the teams of the CNES and Arian Space. Thanks to your skills that are incomparable, everything worked perfectly as usual. So many thanks also to the teams, our extraordinary teams at Thales Delenia Space, who worked on this technological gem over the past few years, and of course thanks to our industrial partners, in particular the prime contractor Airbus Defence and Space. Today is a crucial date for the Ministry of the Army, Armed Forces in France, and everyone at Thales Delenia Space is very proud to have 
contributed both as citizens and as industrialists. Team spirit and mutual trust were and are the two important keywords of our contributions and our collaboration with CNES and the DGA. We are intending to continue in this same way as so that France can remain a key actor in the world space scene. We're at the top level, at the world level, and it's the result of absolutely continuous support from the French government, both to the two prime contractors, but also the small and medium enterprises that brought us indispensable support for the construction of this satellite. Just after the separation, the teams at Telespatio, under the direction of the CNES, intervened to place the satellite on its final orbit and afterwards to deliver it. So once again, congratulations and thanks to Arian Space, to CNES, to the DGA, to all our industrial partners, to all the teams of engineers who worked so hard over the past few years on this mission that was totally strategic. So uh, long life to CSO. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to all of our speakers for these uh, final um, addresses. Uh, so we have uh, Paris uh, via video link uh, and Ecole Militaire. Uh, so, um, Bear with us here, the Jupiter Center. Madam Minister, can you hear me? Are you, uh, I think Madam Minister is ready, poised to take the floor. I can see Florence Parly. We had uh, planned for a speech to take place. Well, actually, I'm making a mistake. Well, Jean-Yves Le Gall instead will uh, take the floor right away. Over to you, Jean-Yves. Jean-Yves Le Gall, Head of CNES, who will first take the floor. So over to you, Jean-Yves. Madam Minister, ladies, gentlemen, uh, general officers, ladies and gentlemen, this is the 20th successful Soyuz launch from Guyana, and this is a source of tremendous satisfaction. We have perfectly succeeded in placing CSO-1 on its orbit. And this shows, once again, now extensively the CNES is in support of uh, the armed forces, particularly the teams of the Toulouse Space Center, who are in charge of designing and uh, contracting for the CSO system hand in hand with the DGA and have been for the last 15 years. Thank you for your efforts. Now that the launcher has uh, separated from the satellite, we will now be monitoring it to make sure that it is on track. The solar panels have deployed. I've just been informed, so um, clearly the satellite is faring well. Once everything has been fully validated, other teams will take over to make sure that the satellite is operating successfully. It needs to be calibrated. We will have to uh, determine what pictures it will take, and we'll have to continue to uh, place it on the, the desired orbit, and we'll be collecting our first pictures from CSO in a very few days. This dual mission has been mobilized for years. We have been in close contact with the Defense Department. We have worked with Toulouse for the ground segment. We've worked with the launch teams for the launch. I'd like to thank all of the cooperating partners the TGA, Airbus, Thales, Alenia Space, and all their subcontractors have worked extraordinarily ably, and I have had the opportunity to say this often. This is an absolute gem of technology. It is no doubt the highest powered observation satellite in the world. Star Center, the Russian industrialists, all of our Guyanese partners, and the Army that in the French Army that in Ghana provides the security required for the launches. I'd like to thank you, Madam Minister, for joining us here this afternoon at the military school and for your unflagging support for our space policy and their support to the CNES. The speech that you made on September 7th 
marked a milestone in our space policy. The perfectly successful launch of CSO-1 has now uh, really laid the foundation for the future of our space program. Thank you all very kindly, and congratulations all round. This is a scale model of our satellite as a token of our esteem, Adam. This is not uh, Jean Le Gaz's first scale model gift. He knows exactly where I'm going to place it as soon as I get back to my office. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chief of Staff for the Air Force, the presence of the CNES, ladies and gentlemen, general, general officers, ladies and gentlemen, CEOs. I don't see you, but I know some of you are listening in from the other side of the Atlantic, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It was worth waiting 24 hours more just a few moments ago. Our space technology, our capability and our intelligence services have made a great leap forward. Just a few moments ago, the fight against terrorism, the success of our operations and our strategic autonomy have also made a great stride forward. The space-based optical component is a challenge that we have successfully risen to. France has placed the most high-powered observation system in the world in orbit. CSO represents our reaffirmation of our control, our reinforcement of our operational superiority. This is only one step in the process, but it's a determining step. We will increase our surveillance capability significantly. We'll be able to identify the uh, targets of interest with unequaled precision, and uh, in uh, 2020, 2021, we'll launch the next two satellites in the series, and this will place us in the absolute vanguard of space-based observation. I'd like to thank all of the teams who've contributed to the success, the teams in Kourou today, who I hope can hear me. I'd like to thank all of those who worked unstintingly at uh, the CNES and the DGA, the manufacturers, Thales, Airbus, for the successful completion of this satellite. And I'd like to thank INSBUS for this successful launch. My thoughts go out to the scientists, the engineers, the mechanics, and the military units who watch over our platforms uh, deployed for each launch. CSO is your success. This is a collective success. It's a triumph of passion, know-how, expertise, and determination. Thank you all very kindly for this magnificent work, and thank you for your absolute commitment. Now more than ever, defense capability requires space-based capability. We need now more than ever a space-based defense strategy. I'm not talking about laser sabers for the moment. I'm just talking about the reality on the ground of our operations. If you think back just a few months ago, if you remember the Hamilton operation when the Syrian regime decided to gas its own people, we had to react. We were able to undertake that operation successfully thanks to our space-based capability, thanks to Helios and Pleiades, who, which allowed us to collect the necessary intelligence to detect the location of production equipment and storage storage facilities 
Thanks to Galileo, we were able to position and guide our bombers. And thanks to Syracuse, we were able to remain in constant communication with our forces during the operation. So space is not a distant realm. It is part of our day-to-day -day operations. We needed more, which is why I decided that we needed to act quickly. CSO has been launched today. This is the first step. The 2019-2025 Military Procurement Act provides for the full renewal of our space-based capability. In 2020, we will launch three electromagnetic monitoring satellites, the CERES series. This is new capability which will make it possible to detect centers of command and enemy fleets. By 2022, the first two telecommunications satellites of the Syracuse 4 series will be launched and a third will be commissioned in 2023, as I have just decided. Will this be enough? Certainly not. Mr. Chairman, you referred to my speech of uh, September last, during which I underscored the need for a defense space-based strategy. Because the sky has become a realm of rivalry, confrontation, and uh, unfriendly initiatives. Espionage can be conducted from space. New players have access to space. And from the ground, there are anti-satellite capabilities being assembled. So we need to do a better job monitoring our own satellites, keeping watch over them. We have to have a perfect understanding of the environment around our satellites perfect understanding of what crosses our satellite's trajectories, and we have to have perfect mapping of space, and we have to be able to take action when our satellites come under attack. The President of the French Republic shares this view and has tasked me with uh, the job of putting together an ambitious space strategy. We have a working group. which has brought together a number of experts, space experts, industrial experts, think tanks, military experts, and diplomats. They have uh, downed many gallons of coffee, and they have produced an excellent and extremely informative and enlightening report after endless hours of work. I am in the process of reviewing it, and I will be able to forward it to the President of the French Republic very soon. Our space-based defense will, it is my hope, be up to the task of protecting us from the existing and future threats, but we will have to go further. And uh, we're not ruling anything out. In order to enjoy perfect protection, we need perfect strategic autonomy. CSO is a success not only for France, but for Europe. Dallas and Airbus designed it. The satellite was created and assembled here in France. French jobs, French businesses, and uh, thus uh, French attractiveness, which is a guarantee of our strategic autonomy, which has got to be bolstered, guaranteed, and extended constantly. So I've mentioned surveillance systems, but I was naturally thinking of launchers as well. The successful launch of CSO demonstrates that we're able to succeed when we cooperate with full trust with Russian players. The new space industry has completely changed the business case for launchers, and uh, the entire industry can be turned on its head in an instant. France and Europe need free and autonomous access to space. So this is no quirk. This is an absolute requirement. 
space is where we can collect intelligence. Space will be the place from where we direct our operations. So we will uh, determinedly implement the critical capability required. Ayan Cis marks the beginning of our autonomous access to the skies. And uh, I will always be a faithful advocate for Ariane 6. Thanks to the work of Ariane Group, the CNES, and all the players who were involved in the program, the project is about to come to fruition. The first launch will be made in mid-2020. And I can announce that the third and last CSO satellite will be placed in orbit thanks to the Ariane 6 launcher. Ariane 6 um, is a source of hope for our autonomy and uh, European access to space. This project, however, will only succeed if everyone uh, plays their role as promised. Competitors have tried to underbid market because their own institutions will be covering the cost. So let us not be naive. Let us not um, fall into uh, this trap, which would only lead to our losing our autonomy of access to space. The Bi-European Act for launchers is a critical first step. We must play collectively uh, at this process of uh, putting Europe on a new footing. We need strategic autonomy and uh, we need economic health. We have demonstrated our extraordinary capability to export. We have know-how, we have jobs, we have uh, conditions which make our country very attractive for talent. We have got extraordinary civilian and military capability because launchers are a dual technology and they are the dual technology par excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, I would like to underscore the fact that the success of this launch and CSO's uh, insertion into orbit is a collective success. And I would like to congratulate you all once again and thank you once again, uh, the entire community who have contributed to this success. I'm all the prouder that uh, this only serves to announce future such successes because when it comes to space and defense, we have much to do. Thank you very kindly.